to see you. I hope you just heard your guy, Rob Seachin, friend, neighbor. You guys are like peas and carrots. <laughs> Literally like peas and carrots. You hang out. He says your view can't work. You say today you are more confident of greater than 4,800, but not ready to give up on 5,100. He says it's impossible, my words, not his, given what the Fed is going to do and where we are. How's, what's the counter? Well, I mean, I think the counter is if we end up with a growth scare, um, and today's jobs report is tracking towards that, that economic activity is softening up, but the underlying fundamentals are strong enough for us to not have a recession. Well, that along with the fact that inflation, I think it's cooling pretty rapidly. We can see it in all the leading indicators. So our inflation dashboards really show that over the next six to 12 months, inflation will cool. That puts the Fed in a position to stop shocking markets. It, they don't have to pivot. They don't have to cut rates. But we can just say, look, if the tenure stays here at 2.7, even at three, that's a 33 PE for a bond, the stock market can re-rate. So I, I think a lot of the reason stocks can surprise, which is what happened in 1982, is that the multiple reaches a new equilibrium because the Fed is no longer shocking. We're avoiding a recession. The tenure is going to be how we calibrate PE. That PE of 20 is not expensive if the bond market is the 10 years somewhere between 33 and 37 times. You know, today, if you buy a 10-year bond at 2.7, you're paying almost 37 times for that coupon. So I think there's that's, that's the reason why 4,800 comes into play. Um, in fact, I think our technician, Mark Newton, thinks that there's greater than a 50% chance that you're you're well above 4,400. In fact, it's, it's, you know, somewhere between 44 and 48 is where he thinks we end the year. And again, it's not because the Fed has to cut. It's just that we've got you know, higher rates baked in. It's the shock to markets that's going to matter. I know, but the, the P only works if the E earnings remain at minimum where they are now, if not higher than where they are now. You can't have earnings go down and have the P still work, can you? Oh, that's right, Scott. Uh, I mean, even if you took a look at today's labor report, you know, wages are still growing 5%. Uh, so we're not talking about wages going, growing at zero. And nominal GDP, you know, came in in the first half over 8%. So let's say it's, you know, still 6, 7, 8%. That's still enough for companies, as long as they're not hit by OWIP effect and inventory corrections to generate double-digit earnings growth. So I, I would say part of our view is that the 2023 EPS numbers, which are maybe at 245 now, they don't have to come down to 200. They might go to 240, but you know, that's two and a half percent off the highs. It's not like E fell so much that you gotta take the S&P down to the 3000 level that so many are talking about.